Hi, I'm Ruben Saltzman with Structure Tech Home Inspections, and today I've got my review of the Hike Micro Pocket 2 infrared camera. Alright, I gotta tell you, this camera, this has to be a complete clone of the FLIR C5 pocket camera. Look at the two side by side. These things are, to the untrained eye, they're indistinguishable. I mean, they're the same size, the same height, shape, weight, thickness, everything about them is so similar. I mean, there's little subtle differences, like, like the basic shape, but for the most part, it, it feels the same. You don't know which one you're holding if you're not looking at them. So they copied the C5, it has a very similar price point. The Pocket 2 retails for $599. The C5, typical retail right now is around $699. At the time I'm making this video, I see a bunch of websites that have it on sale for $653 or something like that. But, you know, they're within $100 of each other. So, same price point, essentially. Now, as far as the resolution, the Pocket 2 has the C5 beat. The, the C5 has a resolution. C5 has a resolution of 160 by 120, while the Pocket 2 has a resolution resolution of 256 by 192. So it does have better resolution. Now I've learned by testing a lot of different infrared cameras that resolution is not everything. There, there's another metric called thermal sensitivity, and this one, the Pocket 2 does have a better thermal sensitivity rating than the FLIR C5, and it's basically the camera's ability to detect small differences in temperature. And you might think, well, who cares? Well, it makes a big difference. If I'm scanning a wall, and I, I wanna figure out where all the studs are, if the studs are only transmitting a tiny bit of temperature difference through to the front of the wall, then that, that subtle little difference in settings is going to be the difference between whether I can see the studs or not. So thermal sensitivity is important. The, like I said, the Pocket 2 has a better thermal sensitivity. The field of view is 50 degrees wide. I think that's right within the sweet spot. On, on the C5, man, I'm talking about the C5 a lot. I, I should almost call this a head-to-head -head comparison between the two. My focus is supposed to be on this camera, but I got to compare it to a benchmark. On the C5, the field of view is 54 degrees so it's it's not quite as wide and I I actually like that when you have a field of view that's too wide on a camera it means that you're seeing too much and you end up losing some of the detail and you need to hold the camera closer to increase your detail so for me I think somewhere between about 40 degrees and 50 degree field of view is ideal for an infrared camera so we're, we're kind of right on the edge of what I'd like to see as ideal. I'd, I'd probably even prefer a 45 degree field of view, but whatever, it's not bad. As far as the size and shape goes, it's very comfortable to hold and it boots up very quickly. It's got a 10 second boot time and compared to a lot of other cameras, that's pretty good. Another thing I really like is that it's very simple to sync this camera with your mobile phone and basically start displaying whatever's on this screen on your mobile phone. It's just a couple of clicks on the camera. In fact, if you set this camera up to always create a hotspot, it's basically you just take your mobile device, you change the Wi-Fi network you're connected to to the one that's broadcast by the Pocket 2, and then you open up your app, and then you're seeing whatever this camera displays. And then you can capture images directly from this camera onto your mobile device. Now, if you're a home inspector and you write reports on site using your mobile de device, it's really handy to have those photos put right on your mobile phone. I love that feature. Don't know if I'd actually take the time to use it, but I love it. I think it's a good feature. Now, one of my complaints with this camera is that one of the menus, it's, it's a menu that lets you get to the quick settings I'm gonna to try to drag down and show you this menu here. And my beef is that, hey, it worked on the first try, look at that. My beef is that it doesn't always work on the first try. But it's, it's some quick settings. 
I, I can even use this button here to turn on the LED, check it out, and then we can hit it again to turn it off, and then we swipe back up to take the menu off. I, I've been practicing with the menu. The reason it worked for me the first time there is because I dragged my finger straight down. If you're holding it with one hand and you move your thumb down, your thumb does not go straight down the screen. It kind of tends to come at an angle and it usually doesn't work on the first try or maybe even the second try. You gotta be a lot more intentional about bringing your thumb straight down if you want that menu to come down. Minor annoyance, not the end of the world, but you know, it's a minor annoyance. Okay, what else do we got? We've got the internal memory is rated at 16 gigabytes. I don't know why there's a difference between rating and what you can actually use, but what you can, what you can actually use is 13.2 gigabytes which still is plenty. That is a ton. You will never run out of this unless you decide you're never gonna remove images from the camera. And then another feature with this camera is something called image blending, where it takes an optical image and it blends it with a thermal image. It does a very nice job of that. I think the blending actually rivals what FLIR does with what they call MSX technology, and it's where it takes whatever's in the visible image and it combines it with a thermal image. So they do a really nice job with this camera. As you can see in this first image, we're looking at the front of a truck. Now, you're not exactly sure what you're looking at. You can kind of figure out it's a Dodge, but if we turn on the image blending, it just makes everything pop. So I love the image blending feature. It works really well. The battery life gives you four hours. That's plenty for a home inspector. It's definitely gonna last you all day because you're not using your camera constantly while you're doing home inspections. And finally, let's look over some head-to-head -head comparison images between the Pocket 2 and the C5. I mean, I, I really say the proof is in the pudding. This is where we really decide which camera you like better is by comparing the same image side by side. And as we scroll through these, you know, I, I gotta say, I prefer the look of the Pocket 2 images. I, I really think they, they have an edge over the C5. So bottom line is I think this is my new favorite for home inspectors on my team, at least for anybody who wants the pocket style of camera. If somebody still wants a pistol style camera, well then this type just isn't for them. But I think, I think this is a really nice pocket camera. The one beef I have with this is that you cannot take regular photos and thermal images at the same time. It, uh, it, it just doesn't do it. And to record images with this camera, you need to double click the shutter button. Why? I have no idea. I don't know why it would be set, set up that way. Maybe a firmware update in the future could fix this. And yeah, I said fix. I think this is a problem, but you can get used to it. You can double click this every time you want to take an image. Just takes a little bit of getting used to. Okay, that's all I got. Again, my name is Ruben Saltzman. I'm with Structure Tech Home Inspections, and this was my review of the Hike Micro Pocket 2 infrared camera. Thank you so much for watching. Oh, and hey, to the one hater out there who does a thumbs down every time I publish a new video, I see you.